Welcome to Waterways. This week, we are transiting the Welland Canal. Ahead of your transit, make sure you check the website for the latest information and timing and check in on time because this is not a show up when you want kind of thing. Once you get the all clear from the Seaway staff, you enter slowly past the massive gates into the cavernous locks. There are eight locks in total, but the seven major ones are concentrated in the first six and a half nautical mile northern stretch of the Welland Canal. The Seaway provides the lines and you need to keep pulling in, so you don't tie off here, you just loop it around a cleat and keep pulling it in. And be sure to keep the line out of the water and away from your props. The first seven locks have an average lift of around 14 meters or 46 feet. And because they're concentrated towards the Lake Ontario side, your upbound journey starts with a lot of excitement. All right, as we're passing under the bridge, welcome back, son. Good time to go over a couple of the basic rules. So once you get underway, there is speed limits throughout the whole thing. You're not going on plane. This is a full day activity. You're not rushing through, but that's all right. I will admit that part of it is exceedingly boring, but the locks are super cool and it's way better and way cheaper than trucking to the other side. Watch for the lights. They got red and green lights at the lift bridges, the draw bridges, and the locks. Don't enter or go under until it's green. In this case, we are the fifth of five boats going through. So we just wait till they're in and we slide in behind them. Also sunscreen, it can be hot. Nice camera work, Wilson. You're gonna get in the end credits for this one. All right, door closed. Up we go. All right, between locks two and three, I feel as though it now is a good time to go over a couple of basic ground rules of the Welland and some tips I've learned. Number one, you've got to book this in advance and pay in advance. You can't just show up like you can on, say, the Trent Severn waterway. Number two, unlike the Trent Severn, where you can just do a lock, turn around, spend the day, get off, wander around, that's not the case here. There's fences, there's barbed wire on the fence right there. You go through this and that's it. There's no stopping, there's no turning around and changing your mind. And you're kind of at the mercy of the big freighters in the seaway overall and how long it takes. I've done this three times now, twice upbound, once downbound, and it averages about seven hours. Though you do hear horror stories where some people have been in here for 24. So make sure you've got enough food and drink and fuel and supplies for at least 24 hours. You very unlikely will need it. You also see on my hands, gloves. That's another tip. The lines they throw down a little bit rough, a little bit wet, dirty. Gloves give you a little more traction and grip and easier. And a tip that was given to me by someone else before my very first transit was when they drop the lines down, loop it around on the opposite side of your boat. Gives you a little better angle of attack to hold you into the wall. Also upbound, you need a minimum of three adults on board. One to do the bow line, one for the stern line, and one to stay at the controls because you are constantly working the throttles and shifters uh, if you've got two, because when they start filling it up, that water's churning around like crazy and you get pushed around. So it's less physically demanding to be the captain going upbound on the Welland, but there is a lot more pressure, let's say. But we got Gramps behind the wheel, he's doing a great job. My wife's at the bow, and I'm bringing up the rear, as usual. And here in lock three, 
you've got the big viewing platform as well. So don't be nervous, but there are gonna be people watching because they just wanna see the Welland. They're not judging how you're handling. They're not judging any movements, nothing like that. It's just somewhere for people on land to come check this stuff. Luckily, it's not the first one, so you kind of got the system down. Arguably, nothing is more exciting than the flight locks. Number four, five, and six are back to back to back, which means the doors are twice as high. And you have to inch your way all the way up to the front. And if there's lots of pleasure craft, you'll likely have to raft off each other. But man, check out this view. So you gotta listen to the Seaway staff and we've changed the order here. So these trawlers behind us, we were actually behind the first three locks, but coming into the flight locks, they said it gets crazy turbulent and it would be insane to be back there. So we're wrapped it up with two of our new sailing boat buddies here. And we've got three of these to go. Let's calm down a little bit now. I'll try and get some video of it to show you how wild it was. It was full on release the Kraken. Video never really does justice for this sort of thing. You're not gonna get tossed around if you hang onto the lines, but the captain has to stay aware and stay at the controls because there will be some correcting you'll likely need to do. Lock four opens directly into lock five and you get to do it all over again. So I don't know if you can hear me on this one because we're right up by the lock and the water's rushing. A question you might have is, well, what if I don't know what to do or I don't have enough people? You can hire a captain to bring you through here. Much like the big freighters have a pilot, you can have someone like my friend Bob. He's helping, he's helping the sailboat through and he's brought through freighters. He can handle your boat. I don't care what it is. So there's a way to get through here. Don't be intimidated by the Welland. You can bring your boat through and it's an absolutely amazing experience. Closing in on 10 hours and we are almost through our transit of the Welland. Lock eight is just ahead of us and then it's a short little hop to Sugarloaf Marina. And we've been waiting here for a little while. Why? That's why. <laughs> that is a gigantic, slow moving freighter. Not a lot of daylight between its ship's walls and the lock walls. Uh, and it is beyond cool to be this close to them. You don't get this opportunity in very many places. The eighth and final lock is a little different. You don't tie up as it's a short lift, a final regulation of the Lake Erie level of the day, so you idle in the middle. And then, you have one last lift bridge and you are clear on the Lake Erie side of the Welland Canal. This was my fourth trip through and the longest by a few hours. From start to finish, it was about 11 hours in total, but a definite adventure. Next week, we're gonna check out this town, Port Colborne. One of the best kept boating secrets in all of Ontario. The downbound journey was roughly the same time dock to dock, but three and a half hours of that was sat waiting at the start for the all clear. It's not something I'd want to do every single day, but something I love doing and love sharing with my family. <laughs>